Ute Kolja. You are senior program leader in the Renewable Energy Policy Division of the International Energy Agency. And I think in this job you're a bit new and it's the first solar heating and cooling conference that you are actually taking place. So I would like to have your impressions. Yes, thank you, Baerbe. Good to speak to you. Yes, it's my first conference and I'm actually really impressed about just the breadth of activities that are going on amazing new innovations that are being talked about. So I think from that point of view, there is a, a very positive future for solar thermal. Good. Well, do you have, I mean, you're a more outstanding person, so it's always good to look into the mirror. Do you have any advices, um, like solar heating and cooling is a traditional technology, but um, also one with a certain potential, but difficulties? Yeah, well, I think the industry can probably learn some lessons from the renewable electricity industry, especially solar PV. They've been extremely good at lobbying policymakers. So we have renewable electricity policies in, I don't know, 150, 160 countries, whereas renewable heat is really behind. So I think, I know it's difficult, the industry is very fragmented, lots of small players, but they need to somehow come together and make policymakers understand how absolutely fundamental renewable heat is for decarbonizing our energy sector. I think you are not a small player. I mean, the International Energy Agency really has a big voice. So how do you support this process of increasing the visibility of our sector? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we now have 29 member states. We work very closely with countries like China as well. We have in Many of our recent publications stress the importance of renewable heat in the World Energy Outlook, in our uh, medium-term market report for renewables. Also, when we speak to our member states through, we have various um, meetings with them, a renewable energy working group, we have had discussions about heat, and, and generally they agree. So we, we try our bit, but I think there needs to be pressure from the industry as well, because that's how things get done. The industry has to demonstrate that it can have cost-effective solutions. In your speech, which you were just holding your keynote, I think you were stressing the fact that we need your um, energy efficiency policies linked to renewable energy policies. What is the, behind, the idea behind that? Well, the idea is that we don't want to waste energy. Now, it's actually quite difficult to find enough renewable heat for all the heat demand we have in the world. At the same time, we know we can reduce that heat demand through you know, insulating buildings or having more efficient industrial processes. So it's quite clear to everyone that these two need to go hand in hand. You reduce first, then you meet your remaining demand through renewable energy. It's the cheapest way, it's the most carbon efficient way, so that's where we need to go. So you have a good example where this worked? Well, there is a bit of a problem at the moment that uh, it, it's difficult in many countries, it's not always being achieved, but take the European Union, for example, in its energy performance directive for buildings, they now have plans for nearly zero energy buildings, which will come in within the next five years, and there, the idea is that you have a very highly efficient building envelope and then you meet your heat demand through renewable heat. Okay, it's still early days, but looking forward to the next five years, that's hopefully what we'll see in new buildings in Europe. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.